So DNA, being a good guy that DNA is sometimes, um, decided to swap Bronze's USB under this banner and took off Eunice. Thank you very much for the follow, Ike. Uh, and that is a significant, significant upgrade to the six star area. Uh, Ramza's USB is one of the bef best buffing soul breaks in the game because it is a triple buff that gives the party instant cast one. And I already talked about how good instant cast is. Uh, granting that to your party is great in any situation and especially in Magicite dungeons where the faster you're able to complete the dungeon, the better. Um, but anyway, we'll start from the top. I think uh, Terra Share would very much likely like me to get to Terra's USB. Terra's OSB, or USB, sorry, Omen. Typical 17.0 entry. 10 single attacks, grants attached fire to the user, and grants X Magitech Warrior to the user. Pretty typical uh, for a Super Soul Break here with the attacks and the attached fire. Uh, and the USB comes to the forefront on the X Magitech Warrior, and that is what makes it. We get another X mode. X Magitech Warrior is a 15 second duration that everybody's seen before with uh, Lightning's BSB2. Or sorry, Lightning's USB. It is not as good as Lightning's USB because Lightning's USB gives her high quick cast, um, which is a 3.0 multiplier uh, to her cast speed. Uh, three times cast speed. Um, however, uh, this is just a flat cast speed modification, so it uh, affects everything and not just fire abilities. Uh, the reason why I would say that Lightnings is better in this situation is because these characters are just going to be doing lightning damage anyway. Um, if you're not dealing dealing fire damage with um, with lightning, that is a, a mistake. However, uh, this does differ a little bit when you take the fact that uh, Terra is a support character. He, she is a support 4, which uh, gives her the ability to use Wrath. Her X mode is not 25 seconds, it's 15. Um, this is kind of a misprint here. X Magitech Warrior to the user for 25 seconds is wrong. It grants her attach fire for 25 seconds. The X Magitech Warrior uh, duration status is 15 seconds. Unless, I mean, I could be wrong. I, I'm i going to say that I trust the duration on X Magitech Warrior more. But I could be wrong because, I mean, it does say default. Uh, it does require testing. However, I am acting under the assumption that it is the lesser of the two. Uh, but anyways, it just uh, increases the cast speed of everything she uses by a times two multiplier. And that in it also counts for Wrath. So you do not necessarily have to use Chain Faraga with her. You could use X Magitech Warrior and then Wrath out OSBs if you have that uh, available to you. But I think the most common usage of her USB would be to Wrath up to it use it, and then cast uh, half-cast time Chain Faragas with the Attach Fire. And then uh, do it all over again next time your Soul Break becomes available. Uh, and it's pretty powerful in its own right. And if you have stuff to combo with it, like her OSB, you could potentially just uh, also use Wrath instead if you want to save yourself. Um, the 5-star 
black magic cones. So it's pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, Terra's one of those characters, uh, one of the very few characters, that gets something of this caliber, uh, the X Magistic Warrior status. Okay, if if it lasts 25 seconds, that's it's fine. I just I would need proof. That's all, because um, I'll generally take the word of the spreadsheet. That's all. No, Wrath, not OSB. Yeah, that would, that's, there's no, nothing to gain by doing that. Oh, Wrath OSB greater than Chain Faraga. Um, hmm. Yes. Because what this allows you to do, because you're getting the plus 80% damage from the attached fire, is it allows her to use a, a striker instead. No. It does have a fire command, but no. The entry on her burst is not elemental. Which means you're completely skipping the attach fire bonus that you're getting. It's... Please just use Chain Faraga or her OSB. I think uh, Wrath OSB is probably better than Chain Faraga. Yeah. Because use A Striker, Wrath up to USB, then, you know, half cast Wrath up to OSBs over and over again. Mm, that's a good point. So, uh, Shadow just posted a link in chat of someone that tested with Terras and says that uh, it's no different from the other 15 second X modes. So, this is, I mean, I don't know this person, but at least they say test has been done. So, I mean, not positive. Uh, one way or the other, but I'm still leaning towards it's a 15 second X mode and that the wording on the spreadsheet is misleading. Uh, next up, we have Cecil's USB, which is actually pretty good by itself. Uh, back when I... I think I was playing Japan, uh, the client at the time that this festival came out, and I pulled on the banner that this appeared on. I didn't like it at the time, but that's because I didn't understand what the game was going to look like. And I actually like it. So, Cecil gets Sacred Cross, which is a fairly high damaging Super Soul Break tier, you know, whatever. Uh, grants him another X mode, and HP stocks 6,000 as well as attach holder. And really, this whole shebang <laughs> has uh, a theme to it. Uh, the HP stock 6,000, attach holy, and X Paladin. We're going to take a look at the X Paladin X mode, which is not as good as most of the other X modes. However, it's still good considering what this uh, USB does. It just gives them defense plus 100%. However, when you add all of this together and you give him something like uh, Divine Cross or Gaia Cross or Draw Fire or Magic Lure uh, and potentially his Legend Materia. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. Um, he becomes a tank to use that gigantic 6,000 HP stock buffer with. He becomes a tank, and not just a tank, but one capable of dealing a ton of damage. And that is exactly why idea, because in using a something like Divine Cross, which is an ability we don't have yet, but will have, which is definitely made for Cecil. Divine Cross is just an, a holy version of Gaia Cross. 
where it is two single attacks at 1.6 each and grants draw fire. Draw fire is another status that you can add onto him that gives him plus 100% more defense. And that's a mul multiplicative bonus. All of this uh, just points to I'm going to taunt everything at me. I'm going to taunt everything. I'm going to become the biggest tank. I'm going to have a huge 6,000 HP stock buffer to help me out with that. And then I'm going to use Guardbringer because I have a ton of defense to use it with. So he's high damage and uh, a tank. And he has Attach Holy that comes on... <laughs> the, uh, that comes on the USB. So he's getting the Attach Holy bonus on the Guardbringer, which brings its multiplier to 6.0 over, over 4 attacks. Um, I really, really like Cecil's USB. I think it's a very powerful addition to uh, a holy team. And because I have only one real holy option on my holy team, which is Agrius and with her BSB, uh, it makes this uh, a nice relic here. But that's just me. But regardless of my situation, I still think that's good. Uh, and Apocalypse is also good. And I believe this is like... Not only is this good by itself, but it's more of a, an investment as well. Because Terra, as one of the premier Final Fantasy characters, is going to get that BSB2 that works well together and makes her worthy of being uh, entrusted to, to be her own engine uh, sometime in the future. But, you know, at least she's got what she's got going on for her right now. And uh, still, this by itself is good. Better with her OSB, if you've gotten that. I've tried for it in the past and never made it. Would I own a second copy of Guardbringer with Cecil USB? Most likely. Because one copy of Guardbringer would obviously obviously be made for um, Agrius. Yeah, uh, Terra does have the trance too. As well as a nice LMR that is on a, a questionable but questionable but still really good banner. Uh, anyway, we moved on. We've got two good, and we have uh, Gilgamesh's Genji gloves next. I'm gonna try being as impartial as I can here. Bear with me. All's fair. No, that's his USB. Yeah, no, this, yeah, well, this is what we're looking for. Um, it was just named something else for so long that was kind of jarring. Anyway, uh, Gilgamesh is a non-elemental knight. Um, so 10 single attacks, that's fine. Uh, grants X legendary swordsman, okay. High retaliate, uh, okay. And Dance of Carnage. We know what Dance of Carnage is because we looked at Refia's Burst Soul Break earlier in the festival. Which uh, sets his critical rate to 50%. That's the that's, that's way I believe, yeah, Shadow. That the X mode is 15, but it's the 25 seconds that is uh, described on the description itself is for the end fire. Uh, if it is 25, that just makes it even better. But, uh, it's probably 15. Anyway, we got two uh, statuses here that we haven't taken a look at before, so we're going to have to take a look at these to find out how good this is. Uh, right off the bat, Dance of Carnage is a 50% crit fix. That's a good thing to have. Uh, what are the others? Uh, Legends of Swordsman's right in front of us. Oh. <laughs> All right, it's just an attack plus 30% buff. Uh, that's not that powerful. Uh, so, uh, high retaliate is right below it. Can't be hit by physical attacks, just like retaliate. Uh, counters physical attacks with an ability, which is single, uh, 1.2 physical. So it's, it's a retaliate that still only hits once but has plus 20% damage. I mean, I am being impartial right now when I say that this is just so, so, so far behind 
even the average USB. Yeah, it does stack. I mean, he can get his attack up high. See, what would make this a little better, and I'm, something I'm going to note right now, because it can turn Gilgamesh into at least uh, someone that can participate in a fire team, is it uh, Samurai get new abilities. Uh, Wildfire Blade and Blaze Moon Stance. Blaze Moon Stance is just uh, a two... Uh, two times 1.0 and grants retaliate. You wouldn't use this on Gilgamesh because he grants his own high retaliate to himself. What you'd actually do here is use Wildfire Blade on him, uh, which is a fire element uh, samurai five star ability with a plus 50% critical chance, which would add to, to the Dance of Carnage if the user has retaliate or high retaliate, which he does gain from the uh, from the USB. So. He would have a 100% crit rate over four attacks. So uh, crit would re increase your damage output by 50%. So that would turn this multiplier into a 4.5 multiplier. So he is actually okay at dealing fire damage. It's just, if you took his USB and added fire damage to it, so it kind of added to that theme and that all the damage that he does he did with, was fire it would be so much better and we wouldn't think so poorly about it but I think uh, a lot of people that really really trash on this USB don't understand that this ability exists and gives them a very high damage potential ability uh, after you've used this USB wildfire uh, blade well the multiplier is very, very similar with the 3.0, but Hailstorm is only two hits for 3.2, while Wildfire Blade is four and gets the critical chance increase as well. So yes, I would say uh, if you average that out, uh, it would deal more damage than Hailstorm, yes. I think just using Hailstorm with them with this doesn't make much sense. So I wouldn't consider him much of an ice character. However, uh, Wildfire Blade does work with his USB very well. I, I know. I know some hetero. I, I'm just saying he could deal fire damage. And it's not bad. It's, it's average to above average. That's how good this ability is with him. But there are a lot of fire damage dealers in the game. And they would do this better than him. I'm not trying to redeem his USB, but I am trying to say that it is not just a steaming pile of shit that you will never use. It does have a use. And if it if it stops you from pulling on a fire banner banner in the in the future, because you feel like you have a, a competent fire capability with uh with Gilgamesh on your team, then that's worth noting. So anyway, uh I tried to be as impartial as I could. I don't want to see this in my polls. Um next up in the last six star tier we have Rams's USB. I already talked about it. At least it doesn't have an X mode attached. It's not gonna be a long explanation. I would not have a complete Gilgamesh. I don't have his burst soul break. And what's funny is I'm trying to stay away from Gilgamesh things because I don't really think he's a good character. However, I don't mind his burst soul break for uh, Sid mission care uh, purposes. So I feel like I'm going to be getting all the things for Gilgamesh that I don't want while not getting the, th the one thing that I do want for him. So history's truth is his uh, Rams' USB, which is just very basic and very good. Roms is one of the best buffers in the game uh, and has been for a while uh, with attack, defense, and magic plus 30% which stacks with just about everything uh, for 25 seconds and grants instacast 1 to the entire party this is a very very powerful uh, buff burst uh, sorry buff USB 
That's it. I want it. The few things in this game that give Instacast 1 are really powerful. Yeah, you would need to find another source of Heska. Maybe. Uh, unless you're in full throttle. Um, but there are a lot of a lot of sources of Heska in, in the in the world today. So it's not as hard as it used to be. Anyway, this is excellent. Uh, next up we have just question marks. Uh, this is one of the oldest verses in the game, I believe. Uh, it was really good, really good way back then. However, it's uh, it's just not that good anymore. I guess I can do it. Can, it can still do things. It's competent at dealing some holy damage, area of effect holy damage. It, does, it has a horrible uh, single target command. Um, I mean, it was bad back then. Back then, what you would do is you would use this burst and then you would use Saint Cross with it. That's how weird it was. But I'm not, I'm not gonna mince words. Uh, we don't want to see this anymore. Power Creep has gotten to a level where there are just bargain bin things that we can get that are better than this. So, uh, yeah, whatever. I, I'll go into it. Uh, I'll show people exactly what it is, because maybe there's a lot of people that have uh, started uh, playing the game <laughs> in a world where no one uses this burst soul break anymore and uh, don't even know what it does. So they should know what it does. Uh, Paladin 4 is 5 group. Uh, grants haste, attach holy. And the commands are a single hit restore HP 60 to the user. It's not even a drain strike. It restores HP according to his mind stat. And while he is a, he is a paladin, he has, actually doesn't have that spectacular of a mind stat, so it doesn't heal that much for him. Uh, the most useful burst command he has available to him here is the two group attacks. Uh, that is still worth using, so he's an area of effect holy paladin with this burst. Uh, however, since most fights are single target, yeah. You're going to end up using St. Cross still with this. Uh, unless you have some form of defense buff that you can uh, work out a guard bringer with him. Anyway, it's bad. It's bad and you don't want it. Unless you're a Cecil fan. I don't want to step on your toes. It is a cool looking burst. Uh, anyway, next up we have the Orichalcum Dirk with it, which is another one of the oldest bursts in the game. Uh, and the, this one, unlike Excalibur, uh, has endured in its effectiveness. One of the traits that we see uh, that can handle power creep better than most things is faster cast speeds. And right out of the gate, we see Arc Blast has an instant cast speed. And five single ranged attacks. So we're attacking non-elemental at one target at instant cast speed. This is actually going to do uh, comparable D DPS to an OSB. However, OSB is usually elemental, so it's not really that fair of a comparison anymore. Um, but really what uh, defines Von's Arc Blast is the defense and magic minus 40% debuff that you place on the boss. While uh, with Magicite Dungeons coming, there will be at least uh, a dark spot on the radar with uh, where this isn't all that effective anymore. However, anywhere else uh, for anyone that deals the deals magic damage and especially piercing magic damage, this is an incredibly good status to have at instacast speed on someone that can deal uh, decent damage on a physical team because you're uh, shredding defense while you're at it. And the commands work perfectly with the matching and defense minus 40% debuff. And we're going to see that as well. 
Um, arc. Blast. Again, reduce cast times. And that's what is so nice about Vaughn. Uh, because he is essentially a damage dealer that is laying all these debuffs on the boss. And he's doing it so quickly that it allows him to do other things as well. Which, uh, in Vaughn's case, he has a few options available to him. Like, um, Thief's Revenge, uh, Mug Bloodlust. Uh, eventually, I suppose, he attacks so fast that he could eventually uh, work up Ripper Rush in its, uh, in its neutered form. Uh, Dervish. Uh, but really, it, just by itself, the BSB shreds defense so far that even though all this looks supportish, he actually ends up dealing a lot of damage uh, when you factor in the two defense minus 40% stacking buffs or debuffs that you've placed on the boss. Uh, and seeing the effects of that uh, come into play in the increased damage that you're dealing with your other characters on the team. Anyway, uh, this is one of the the oldies but besties for Soul Breaks, and I consider it a big win on the banner. Uh, I love this. I would love to get this relic. Uh, next up, we have the Veil of Wii U uh, Alpha No, Final Fantasy XIII. It um, has a pretty lame animation, but that does not extend to the actual effectiveness of it. How does he stack up versus Noctis and Zell? Well, complementary. Uh, Noctis and Zell are... Well, Zell's a buffer. Right, exactly. Uh, different role. Noctis is a straight-up damage dealer. Zell is a damage dealer buffer. And Vaughn is a debuffer damage dealer. Uh, I Ideally, I'd want to use all three of them together. But yeah, Noctis and Zell are going to out-damage. There's, there's no way I said 13. There's no way I said 13. You, you post that clip in chat, and we can see it. There's no way I said 13. Well, anyway, he's from Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, and it's a very good burst. Uh, Aerial Blast, eight single attacks, grants haste, slash wind. All right, basic. Did I say 13? Son of a bitch. Oh, you know what? I, it's actually, it, it slipped my mind because uh, I remembered that Final Fantasy XIV isn't actually a real Final Fantasy. So I must have just thrown him into thirteen instead because while that is a really bad game, it is at least a real one. Tables have turned. Uh, so Alphino's aerial burst uh, is just excellent, and for the same reasons as Valm was a good segue here. Uh, Alphino's first command is extremely high damage. Type 0 is the better 13. That's a it's a good statement. I like that. Um, so Alphino's first command grants instant cast 1 to the user when it is used. And just like with Vaughn and his lower cast times, uh, this just increases the damage so much that uh, you're going to be looking, uh, sometimes, maybe, looking at smaller numbers uh, with Alpha No, but you're okay with that because he's doing everything at instant cast speed, so uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. And I guess uh, for the same reason why I was talking about Shantoto and Dash, um, 
where you benefit from Desh having the quick magic attacks on the command, because what it does is it reduces the recast of the super soul or the burst soul break itself down to zero by trading that for the first cast of the burst being at 1.65. So it's actually more beneficial in the end. So it's almost like you're insta-casting everything that you do, except for one command one every rotation. Uh, I found out, unless you're really taxed, that the only time you're generally going to be using the second uh, second command is probably with Valley Garmanda. Because it makes sense to hone Tiamat and uh, Ogopogo eventually. So you're going to have a high hone to that. So the Smart Ether is going to be less useful. But Valley Garmanda is never going to have a high hone. I mean, if you go heavy on it, you're going to end up with a, you know, a, a three uses. So it's still going to probably benefit from Aether Flow. But knowing that this exists, probably going to limit my Valley Garmanda hones to R2. Um, but this is what you do with him. Because when you're attacking uh, a wind vulnerability, that makes this better. And that's versus single target. This is just so good. It's better than Tiamat uh, because it attacks instantly and has a potential to break 30,000 damage. Uh, it's, just, uh, it's just so much better. So it's weird to think that Alphano doesn't become a Tiamat user until he gets his USB. He, this is more for Valley Garmin. Oh, Adia went uh, went to try go clipping, so she missed the the shade that I threw. It's okay. It's okay. Anyway, it's a really basic burst, but extremely powerful. That's that's all. Uh, and wind magical damage. I guess that's worth uh, noting that the wind magicite dungeon that will be released eventually is much easier to complete with uh, mages rather than physical characters. And the two most powerful wind mages in the game are right here and right here. So uh, that's actually kind of nice. This banner becomes more of a target if you don't want to go down the physical route with the cloud USB banner. Yeah, the multiplier for Aether Flow is high, but it, no, it's two hits, isn't it? So it's still not bad regardless. Oh, it's not that high. It's only 8.56. Uh, but anyway, this is the premier Wind Mage Burst in the entire game. Uh, and as kind of a, a different role side grade, I would say it's better than Strago. I, but Strago is extremely awesome. So, yeah, you're, you're probably right. Strago is better than Fusion for the Wind Match site. Because Fusion is going to run into... Uh, it won't be able to exceed 20,000 damage, while Strago is going to uh, deal 20,000 damage to Golem while dropping a deuce on the toilet. But Alphano is probably going to exceed what Strago can do. I don't. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, I don't think stuff throws. So, uh, Jesus. Uh, next up, we have Fusion's BSB, which is basically the Vaughn of physical or uh, magical characters. Which is why I placed, I just placed Drago above her for the purpose of the uh, Wind Magicite. However, uh, anywhere else, just like Vaughn, uh, she is disgusting. Even though she does primarily wind damage, she's going to do plenty of damage, plus she's going to completely cripple a boss's magical capability. Um, so she's still good against fights that are not wind-focused, and I use her very, very often. 
So Fushin's BSB Metsu is 5 group attacks, magic and resistance minus 40%, just like Vaughn, except trading out the defense for resistance, which makes sense, she is, uh, she's a mage and she will be the same uh, thing on mage parties. And grants haste and burst mode user. Again, instant cast uh, entry as well as the same as Vaughn's. And Fushin's commands are both really good. They're both ninja cast speed, just like Vaughn's. When non-elemental, the non-elemental is nice, and that's what makes her uh, still highly capable versus uh, bosses that uh, Omni resists, except for, you know, whatever it is you're exploiting. And if it's not wind, you still have the non-elemental option. And while she definitely does do more wind damage, it's not like she's reliant on it like someone like uh, Alphano is, because he has the end win status on his uh, entry. Fusion's uh, damage increase is found in the uh, minus 40% resistance buff, which is uh, which will be uniform across elementals. So she can be a competent non-elemental damage mage as well. Uh, so four single attacks at ninja cast speed is a really nice thing for her to have and a ninja cast speed further re uh, resistance redu reduction. This is minus 30%, so it's equivalent to uh, mental break, not mental breakdown. This uh, Kiros, someone we don't have in the game yet for uh, global, does the resistance minus 50%. That is a mental breakdown. But anyway, this is uh, one of the best mage bursts in the game. Um, and for many... Almost all the same reasons that Vaughn is uh, really, really, hmm, sorry, uh, good for physical teams. So, excellent wind mage, excellent all mage, uh, but also wind. And next up we have a definite welcome addition because it has never reoccurred on a realm banner. Um, Zell's BSB. Uh, I'm so happy that this is here. Uh, I feel like it probably replaced Lars's BSB, which actually makes me a bit sad, but I think I would prefer Zell's BSB being here over Lars's. Uh, personally, that's my personal opinion, probably because I plan on pulling on the Final Fantasy 15 event that has Iris's Bristol Break, which also uh, contains the Status Blink buff. So she'll probably be my Status Blink buffer. And I really want this glove, as well as the burst it's attached to. Don't have to go far to find this one. So Duelist, again, we get some more Instant Cast stuff. Love Instant Cast. 10 random attacks causes stun, 70%. Uh, so 7% times 10. I guess that's something. Uh, we've been seeing some bosses lately. They've decided to at least let stun or interrupt, whatever you want to call it, linger around a little more than we're used to. Um, so I, I'm not going to say that this is useless. It is. It can be useful. So it's not a dead buff. But anyway, the, the primary characteristic of his entry is the Instacast plus critical 50% to all allies for 25 seconds. Uh, that's just a huge buff to have on someone like Zell. Where, like, a situation like Aiko makes her makes Aiko the, the physical support, right? Or the physical healer. Where Zell becomes, what, the physical physical? No, on any team that Zell is on, you're going to want this buff. So it's uh, a little more... I don't know, focused, I guess you could say, which allows you to get a little more uh, fancy with your healer. And there's going to be some fancy healers that you're want, going to want to get fancy with. <laughs> uh, I'm so happy that that line turned out where I, the way I wanted it to. Anyway, Zell's Burst um, has two good commands on it. One of it is four single uh, and grants instant cast one to the user. Um... And the other, the first command, is for single and grants Dark Bargain to the user. If you need the attack, use Dark Bargain. If you don't, Instant Cast 1. It saves lives, man. Uh, and this is Instant Cast 1 like Alpha knows. Not Instant uh, Physical Attacks, not Instant Magical Attacks, it's Instant Cast. So this actually works for RWs as well. 
So think about that. And you're actually going to want to use it uh, sometimes because this instant cast one makes a good thing to use uh, for his last uh, before you recast his burst because his burst is single target or uh, instant cast. So you're actually just wasting this if you recast his bursts immediately after uh, the verse ends. So use it to cast an RW, and then it's a cast his burst. Zell does everything instantly. Uh, and he's one of the best non-elemental physical characters that we have. And weirdly enough, uh... Zell's fist weapon that the burst is attached to is a plus fire fist, even though he doesn't do fire damage. However, uh, you could potentially use uh, the five star uh, critical fire monk ability with him with this. And I suppose you could use the earth one too if you wanted to. But I mean, most of the time you're going to be using his non elemental when using his burst. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't do fire damage yet. Uh, Zell turns into a fire monk with his USB. This is a, a super, super BSB Casper. You've been missing out. Uh, and next up, we have a healer burst. For Realm. <laughs> uh, for now, it is, uh, it's Refia's glove, yeah. That's what I want the, the relic for, but I also want the Burst Soul Break. Um, so next up, we have Realm's Burst Soul Break. Patience, Dawn. I will, I will talk about it when we get to the end. Uh, so we have Star Prism for Realm, uh, and anybody that did the... Uh, latest Final Fantasy 13 multiplayer with the guy that decides to deal 100,000 damage to party members understands the value of Last Stand. Um, and Realm is the only healer burst that can bestow Last Stand upon your group, which is a really nice thing to have. Uh, so it's a really uh, unique healer burst on... It has good commands as well. Just like uh, Ishtola's. Zero cast time Kiraja. I lost it. Okay, zero cast time Kiraja and just plain Medica. So it's got, you know, your basic good commands. You're glad to see them. And then last stand all allies. The only healer that can do this. Uh, from their BSB at least. You can get this from USB. Um, I want this. And I think I, I want it less uh, if I pull on the Final Fantasy VI banner, because I plan on buying, pulling on the Final Fantasy VI banner in two days, uh, and I don't get Realm things. because Realms, USB, and LMR occur on that, and if I get those, then I'll be really interested in getting this, because they serve different purposes. Uh, this would be for the last sand and sustained healing, while Realms USB is excellent in just about every situation. Um, And so they work well together, and a Relimar is fine too. It's not critical to the way Realm is played, but it's good. However, if I'm able to escape from that banner getting what I want, which is the Celeste Relics, uh, without getting Realm stuff, I'd probably be less thrilled about getting this. Just because I have a lot of healers, and it's hard, it's hard to find spots for healers, you know? Um, normally you're running one, and at max you're probably running two, right? So, with so many good healing options available to me now, and in the future I do plan on pulling for the Iris BSB, that will leave me with Ishtola, Vanil, and Iris as three very, very powerful healers. So, um, I wouldn't be as thrilled with this. However, if I do pull Realm things off of the Final Fantasy VI banner, which I most likely will, uh, then I'd be very interested in picking this up, because it, it extends the usability of Realm. 
there are many situations where I would like to be using a healer burst with a healer and have it bestow last stand upon my, my group. That would be a very valuable thing to have. So this is good. This is very good. Very, very powerful healer burst. One of the best in the game. Whew. Okay, so uh, last up we have the Super Soul Breaks, which are two good Super Soul Breaks. Two very good Super Soul Breaks. Uh, in the first we have the Genji Gloves, which is Ramza's, which is nice that this occurs here, because another thing that it works well with, uh, because they don't, there's zero overlap between the two, is his USB. Okay. Uh, SSB2 is Chant, which uh, it gives Stone Skin 30% to the party, which is fine, it's good and bad, which is an issue, uh, but critical damage plus 50%. And while this feels light, it's actually really good because the critical damage 50% buff is fairly rare. Uh, the only time I've mentioned it tonight was on the first command of Ruffy's Burst, which is kind of really unique in that regard, um, and it stacks with that anyway. But let's go look it up. Ooh. Oh, awful. We have four instances that appear on the Soul Break list. The first is Chant. The second, uh, oh yeah, Ruffy's USB. Let's not get into that. Uh, that's extremely powerful, but that's not out yet. And that's just to her, I believe. Yeah, it's just to her. It's not a party buff. Where Rams is a party buff. Uh, Cyan, which is critical damage to the user, so that is also not a party buff. So out of the four instances, we only have two that give it to the party, and the other is Zax, which is definitely uh, a much better source in most cases than uh, Ramza's. Um, Zax CSB is super interesting that it gives attack plus 50% to the party and critical damage plus 50% to the party and does the wind chain. Uh, yeah, really, really good here. Uh, yes, Oracle, it, it does combo with those very well. But Delita, uh, it's okay. It's okay with Delita. Delita has another goal in mind, and it's to combo his BSB with his USB, in which case he becomes extremely powerful, uh, because that does the same thing. But anyway, uh, these are the only two, Zax and Ramza's, to add critical fi damage 50% to the party. And this buff is probably so rare, because it's not good. Um, it's, it's not good alone, because people's critical rate is very low unassisted but if you have critical buffs like Zell's for instance which happens to appear on this banner um, then you're increasing the damage potential of your team a lot uh, so that is a we have two Genji gloves on this banner huh okay so that's a good Super Soul Break for this to appear on this banner. I probably wouldn't use it, <laughs> definitely wouldn't use it by itself, uh, but if I was thinking of making a team, I could make the case for including Genji Gloves and Burning Fist onto a team, and that would be pretty awesome. Uh, however, it's uh, actually just a nice thing to have if you have other Ramza things, like Shout uh, and his USB. It makes Ramba, Ramza good in uh, many different situations. He has... Uh, a lot of stuff in his tool chest. Uh, and last, we have a very good Super Soul Break in Alphino's Final Fantasy fourteen. Deployment Tactics. Welcome back, Mex. Rage. So Alphanod's Deployment Tactics is an excellent Super Soul Break, uh, a hybrid buff of attack magic 30%, uh, I, and a Radiant Shield of 100%. This is a very powerful Soul Break uh, due to the fact that it can be used anywhere. Um, I think it's only limited by the fact that it's on Alphano, 
and he doesn't have as this as an expansive uh, usage scenario as this uh, Super Soul Break does. However, uh, he does have a expansive usage scenario. Um, I think this is going to be a full throttle superstar. <laughs> Great, SD. I would not. Uh, I would not like it any other way. I appreciate it. That is the way to do it. Um, this is an excellent super soul break. I mean, you can you you can see what it does. Uh, good to have on Alpha No. I have it, and I can tell you right now that it is very valuable. In many situations, um, it's really kind of obnoxious in multiplayer. <laughs> in a good and bad way. Does a lot of damage, but it takes a lot of time. In uh, two different ways. It takes a lot of time, like real world time, and it also takes a lot of time in uh, game time. Uh, something a lot of people don't, I mean, notice playing day to day is that uh, a lot of things like Radiant Shield ticks uh, advance the game clock which is nice for increasing your ATB because usually what happens is uh, the boss will use an ability and that is what triggers the Radiant Shield so they're still in a state in which they're unable to gain their ATB while you are so while the, AT, uh, the Radiant Shield triggers are going off you're gaining ATB uh, the drawback to this is that while the Radiant Shield triggers are going off, your buff timers are also ticking down. So there can be situations where everybody is at full ATB and Radiant Shield triggers are going off and you're losing buff timers for practically nothing. Um, so I just want to, I mean, I'm not saying that that's a good or a bad, it's, I think it's overall a good thing and this is a very good Super Soul Break. Just want people to be aware of how that works. Um, so overall, how do we feel about this banner? Uh, didn't like Genji Gloves, but really like the t other three USBs. Uh, Apocalypse, Lightbringer, and Sasuke's Blade is great. Um, I'm very glad that this appeared here instead of Yuna's USB. This is a straight upgrade there. Uh, this is questionable. However, every other single burst in this section are either extremely good or best in class. Uh, Vaughn, Alphano, Ujin, Zell, and Realm are all very good. Uh, it makes this an unfortunate inclusion because if you get it, it's just like, you know, you tilt your head back, breathe heavily a few times, and you know, you wish you could have that, that could have been anything else on this banner. Um, but at least it's just one bad thing, where some of the other banners that we've taken a look at are, uh, are more than that, and we have two good Super Soul Breaks. Unfortunately, uh, something about these Super Soul Breaks is neither of them are good as dupes. Um, we've seen in the past, I think on the previous banner, where we did have one that was good as a dupe, Raijin's Pauldron is, uh, is fine. You don't mind having more than one, and you don't mind stacking them and combining them to make strong relics, because armor is one of those things that you're probably going to eschew uh, using uh, synergy relics in favor, in favor of plus elemental damage relics in a lot of situations, so you want them to be very powerful, and the only way to increase their power level um, is basically to, to combine them. Uh, so I really think this banner is incredible. I mean, the worst things I can say about it is that Gilgamesh's Genji Gloves are here, and it's a confused relic. Not bad, but definitely not on the same page with other high-power USBs. Um, Excalibur. And the fact that these aren't good as dupes, uh, which means you're you're probably going to be duping on these because that's how banners work. Um, but still, they're good. They're good to get. How do I feel about this banner personally? I love it. 
I have um, two dupes, three dupes. Yeah, three dupes on it. Nothing from the top end, which is nice. Uh, I have Excalibur. So that, I mean, that sucks even more. <laughs> it's not even a great dupe anymore because it's a holy sword. They used to be great back in the day, but not so anymore. Um, I have Vela Wii U. This is also an awful dupe. Uh, I have Fusion Shin Chakram, uh, which is a great dupe, actually. So I wouldn't be upset about getting another one of those. Uh, and I have this, which is a bad dupe. So I was a little confused about pulling on this banner when I uh, originally evaluated it last night. But I think despite the fact that this and this and this would be so bad doesn't stop the fact that there are a lot of really good stuff I can pick up on this banner for my team personally. One thing I really like about this banner is that um, my Final Fantasy 7 pulls were going to be focused on the Vincent banner that's coming up. And Vincent has a better version of uh, Apocalypse here. Not 100% better. It's, it, I think it's overall better, but it's a little different in that Apocalypse gives you uh, global quick cast, while uh, Vincent's USB gives him fire quick fire locked quick cast like lightning. Um, I like it overall better because of the flexibility of him being able to be physical or magical. But if I pulled uh, Terra's Apocalypse here, I would be able to save myself Mithril and not have to pull on that event because one of my main reasons for pulling on that event would be for the fire capability of Vincent and uh, Terra would remove that uh, that necessity so that's neat uh, I need a another holy knight on my team for holy uh, I only have one good one in Agrius I don't consider Cecil's <laughs> BSB1 to be uh, a good addition to a holy team so this plus Agrius is a awesome start to an awesome holy team. Vincent's weapon is Cerberus. Um, uh, I, I don't want it. I wouldn't complain too much, but I don't want it. This is just good. There are so few sources of Instacast 0, or Instacast 1 in the game. And having this, like, I eventually want to de develop Ramza. I think Ramza is extremely good right now. And that's the scary part, is that Ramza is being forgotten by DNA. Uh, he has not had much going for him for a very long time. Like, four, four and a half, five months now in Japan. Um, and he's due. And He's due because he needs his LMR. He's the main character of Final Fantasy Tactics. And he's going to be getting his LMR. Um, and they are going to develop Ramza. And I would like the powerful things that Ramza has right now. He's already powerful. And he's due for even more. And I think uh, I think Ramza has a, the capability to explode into being the, the best buffer in the game if he isn't that already. Uh, I've wanted this for so long, and I still do. I want this duped. I love Fusion. I think she's one of the best mages in the entire game. And the best uh, plus win magic weapon that she can use is her, believe it or not, her original uh, regular soul break she, uh, that came on her sheer feather dagger is the best. Uh, but that is not available in the game anymore since it's a regular soul break and those don't appear on even lucky banners So the best weapon that I can put on fusion is a fully augmented uh, Eight star version of this weapon even her OSB is uh, realm synergy locked it only gets plus wind damage and realm uh, This is all realms. So this is the best weapon. I can field with her. So uh, I, I would actually be thrilled to get a dupe of this is as crazy as that sounds I wanted this for so long, I want the Relic for Refia, and I want the Burst because I think Zella's awesome. And I've already talked about how I feel about this personally. And uh, repeat what I said above about Ramza, and this is a dupe for me. So this is going to be uh, my festival banner. 
I will be tossing at least 50 Mithril down on this. I mean, this is all contingent on how our lucky draws go, but still. Shadow, yeah, because that knife... That knife belongs to this pipsqueak right here. Zell's Legend Material. Uh, percentage chance to grant quick cast 3 after dealing a critical hit, which Zell does often. Uh, even with using his USB or BSB, uh, he's always going to be uh, inflicting critical hits. So he's always going to be refreshing this quick cast 3. So he's basically going to be operating at quick casts. Um, obviously not meant to be used with his BSB, because as we talked about when I went over his BSB, uh, he does everything instantly. So... Uh, this is more for his USB, and this is also for his USB, where he gets a critical 50% uh, buff starting at the beginning of the battle. Obviously not meant to be used with his BSB, because uh, they wouldn't stack with each other. Am I doing all three lucky draws? Yes, Caspa, I am. Right, the Pipsqueak Sage Summer has got status with LLM. That's the crazy part about Alphano. He's uh, so frigging powerful. And uh, they haven't even given him Legend Materia yet. Some of these characters are made like insane tier, like Papalimo, 35% chance to dual cast fire abilities. That's just gross. That's just gross. But Alphano, whatever. Don't need that. I'm pretty pimp by myself. Dual casts? Uh, oh my goodness. Dual casts on Alphano would be sick. That's when we start using Tiamat. What do I think of Raijin's LMR? Now we're, we're treading off off banner now, by the way. So this is the last one of these that I do. 35% uh, chance to grant quick cast one of the user. I like it a lot. That works really well with his BSB. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, Shadow. Six hit TM at with his uh his summoning USB. So that's our fourth banner. I do need to take a, a small break 